We're here today to talk about Batman Arkham Origins and you're watching the connected digital world. Thanks for joining us. Would Thank you, you like to introduce yourself and tell us what you do? Sure, so my name is Ben Mattis. Uh, I'm the senior producer at WB Games Montreal on Batman Arkham Origins. So, Batman Arkham Origins, tell us a little bit about that. So, Batman Arkham Origins uh, is a prequel game to Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, obviously part of the Arkhamverse. Um, it is an early career Batman story as a result of that, which takes place in year two of his career. By our math, Arkham Asylum is about year seven, uh, which puts Arkham City at about year nine. Um, so as a result of that, our Batman is, we like to say, younger and rawer, uh, much less fully formed. Um, and uh, it, it gives us some wonderful opportunities to tell what we think is a, it will hopefully stand out and kind of stand the test of time as a, a must experience early career Batman story. Um, so by year two in his career, he's used to being the best um, because really the only people in Gotham who are kind of uh, opposing him or that he, he, he is focused on are organized crime and gangs and, and whatnot. So no one with any sort of enhanced abilities that would, would challenge his own. But all of that changes on the night that, that this game takes place. It's Christmas Eve, and the Black Mask has put a 50... Black Mask, who's the number one crime lord in Gotham, has put a $50 million bounty on Batman's head, which has attracted eight of the top assassins in the DC universe to Gotham for one night to kill the Bat. So when they bring with them their gangs and thugs and mercenaries and whatnot to try and create chaos and turmoil in the city streets, um, they're hoping that'll lure Batman out into the open where they can kill him and collect the bounty. So over the course of this night, Batman goes from the world of the familiar to, to the world of the unknown in, in an instant. This $50 million is a catalyst that attracts assassins, obviously, that takes people in the city that he's used to interacting with, like cops and SWAT and whatnot, and in some cases turns them against him at an all new level because there's a $50 million bounty there. So this sort of, this, this, this turmoil of, of chaos is just growing and growing. This sort of maelstrom is just getting more and more chaotic. And, and all of the events of this night are also attracting other members of the rogues gallery, let's, let's say, who aren't necessarily in it for the money, but see an opportunity to put their own plans into action. And we've talked about some of these characters in the past, characters like Anarchy and, and Mad Hatter, who just go, hmm, there's all sorts of crazy happening tonight. I'm going to go kidnap someone, or I'm going to go blow up some buildings, or, or what have you. So this formative night in his career literally changes everything. It opens the Pandora's box, and it will force... Batman to evolve at a, at a pace unlike anything he's ever had to do before. He has to go, we like to say, from being just the masked vigilante to truly becoming the Dark Knight. Uh, and if he doesn't, not only is his life forfeit, but the city that he's sort of sworn to protect as well. Right, so you mentioned obviously there are eight of the top assassins. Yeah. How did you guys go about picking those eight? Yeah, that was, it's, it's a fun process. I remember early on in the project, there was a long list of there's a long list of people who kill for money in the DC universe, right? So, whatever, thirty different people up on a board, um, and there was sort of three filtering criteria. One was, can we make them look cool? Like, if he, if there's no way that they're gonna fit in the Arkham first, then let's not go with them. Um, the second was, can we make sure that we have some diversity of our assassin lineup? If we had eight large, muscular, white guys with Eastern European accents, uh, it wouldn't be a very exciting lineup of, of villains because they'd kind of all fight the same. You'd you kind of encounter them the same way and, and defeat them the same way. So we wanted to make sure we had a diversity of physical size, ability set, sex, nationality, whatnot. But by far the most important uh, criteria was how do their ability sets and you know all of those ability sets are well known we can pull it straight from the comics how can we map those ability sets against the core mechanics 
in the Arkham game to make sure that these assassins are serving as a master class, a final exam to challenge the player's mastery and understanding of key abilities. Um, so in, in the case of, of Deathstroke, um, he's a very, very competent martial artist, hand-to-hand -hand fighter. He can rival and, and challenge Batman in that, in that regards. And he has a sword and, and the staff and the gun and various other cool elements that, because he's very, you know, he's ruthless. He will kill happily. Um, and so we designed the Deathstroke boss fight to really focus on challenging Batman's ability to counter. Um, and, and if you can defeat Deathstroke, you have mastered all of the different kinds of permutations of countering, countering a single attack, countering multiple attacks, countering multiple simultaneous attacks or, or attacks that are spaced out. You've sort of mastered countering in all of its different facets um, to the point where with Deathstroke defeated when you're out in the game, you should feel a pretty strong confidence in your ability to counter whatever, so whatever we can throw at you. Um, and, and so just as Batman as, is evolving towards becoming the Dark Knight, so too is the player sort of earning their black belt in being Batman. And these, these assassin encounters are, are sort of the tests that you have to pass before you can, I am Batman. Let's talk a little bit about the combat system. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's, it's similar but different. Yep. So do you want to tell us about that? Yeah. Um, there are certain elements of the game where we felt uh, a desire to, to invest heavily and reimagine and re um, the, the detective and, and case file system is one area where we, we put a lot of energy to sort of really reinforce that fantasy of being the world's great detective above and beyond what we think was done in, in the previous games in the franchise. And then there were other areas where we definitely had a sort of if it's not broke, let's not try and fix it mentality. Um, and free flow combat is exactly one of those situations. We could have spent tens of millions of dollars and you know years recreating that system from the ground up in order to fix you know the camera angle in these super niche circumstances that sometimes isn't in exactly the perfect position and broken 10 other things as a result of that uh, and it would have been a horrible investment in our time and energy and money and in fact we might have made the system worse um, the free flow combat system is in our opinion biased as it may be, an industry class hand-to-hand -hand melee system and, and has depth to it that many players just haven't sort of delved, they haven't experienced how deep that is. So we wanted to iterate on top of that and add new strategies with new enemies and new gadgets and modify some animations in order to help reinforce this younger, raw Batman and, and, and how he's always returning to a sort of combat stance rather than a, a more neutral stance. But what we've also invested significantly in is making sure players understand just how deep down the rabbit hole they can go with this system in terms of um, training them, in terms of clearly communicating to them the amount of experience points that they receive as a result of, of, of a fight, helping them understand how they could have earned more experience points, how they could have done better, um, giving them opportunities to, to practice and when, when they're upgrading, clearly communicating to them what these upgraded gadgets do, what these upgraded abilities do, showing them in a video what it does, showing them you know, with text and with button prompts, really making sure that people aren't just, uh, whatever, I'll just upgrade my batarang because I don't know, everything else I can't, I don't know what it does, so I'm just gonna upgrade my batarang. We don't want people upgrading haphazardly. We want them carefully focusing their upgrades on the challenges they're currently facing so that, again, with this idea that the player's evolution in their abilities and Batman's evolution through the intensity of the night are sort of advancing in lockstep. Cool. You mentioned, obviously, training the, the player in order to, to use some of the combat features. That's part of the new training gymnasium in the Batcave. Yep. So do you want to talk a little bit about the Batcave, what that really represents in this game, and, yeah. and obviously then the training gymnasium? Um, well, who doesn't at least wish they had the man cave. Like, who doesn't want a man cave, right? Everyone wants a man cave or has a man cave. I used to have one, don't have now, two kids, you know. Um, but I certainly loved having one. And the back cave is like the original man cave, right? It was like that, you know, it was such a core fantasy 
um, for us at the very beginning of development that we absolutely wanted to go to the Batcave, the one under Wayne Manor, which is where all of his toys are, where all of his gadgets, where all of his, you know, his stuff is centralized, both for narrative reasons, because there's wonderful opportunities to place Easter eggs and sort of hidden piece of information in it, and um, for core gameplay reasons, a place that would actually attract the player back to it multiple times over the course of the game. So, you know, stand, the, you know, the key standout functionality in the back cave above and beyond uh, its other sort of attractions is the, the training gym where we've centralized all of the challenge maps that you will unlock over the course of the game as well as this all new um, training mode. And the training mode has uh, 12 different challenge, 12 different training situations, each, each with three different trophies or objectives. Um, so the first one might be, you know, learn how to build a times five or a times eight combo meter. The second one is learn how to counter. The third one is, uh, you know, learn how to do beatdowns. But by the end, it's things like learn how to use a combination of your uh, concussion detonator and your explosive gel and the multi-ground uh, combo takedown in order to tear through large groups. So it, it, it kind of works its way up to some very advanced tactics. Um, and you, 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 you'll unlock these over the course of the game as Batman is encountering, for example, the martial artist for the first time. You encounter the martial artist for the first time, boop, back in the training gym, you've got a martial arts in, in, uh, training situation unlocked. If you're having challenges with the martial artists out in the open world, you have the opportunity to just summon the Batwing, hand back to the Batcave, go to the training gym, training gym rather, and practice in this scenario against the martial artists multiple times until you feel comfortable that you've mastered or been remastered, as it might be, um, how to counter their multiple attacks. Then once you feel comfortable with it, you earn experience points as, as a result of your, your, your training because you are literally practicing and as Batman it makes sense that the skills that you are practicing in the training map should be every bit as valuable as the skills you're practicing when you're out in the open world. Um, you can level up your character, choose, you know, upgrade whatever the case might be, go back out into the open world and then kind of do it for real. So we think it's a wonderful opportunity for people to safely practice and also be rewarded for the fact that they're safely practicing and that's all centralized in the Batcave. Brilliant. One last question yeah, before sure. we go. Um, the voices. Yeah. Who can you reveal as voices so far? So uh, the ones that stand out uh, in, in the presentations that we've done so far um, definitely have to be our Batman, which is Roger Craig Smith, um, and uh, our Joker, which is uh, Troy Baker. Um, they were both cast after sort of extensive auditioning, looking for voice actors who understood the need to to fill in the, the the early career shoes that grow to become the characters as portrayed by uh, you, you know the, the voice actors from the later games like Mark Hamill you know whatnot we, we we need Roger to create a version of the character that becomes Kevin Conroy's version of Batman and we needed Troy to do a version of the character that becomes Mark Hamill while still obviously adding their own quirks, their own elements, their own little sort of um, pers personality components to it. We, we were looking for people who could do young, raw versions of those characters and both Troy and Roger understood that from, from day one and uh, well, hopefully the results speak for itself, but we're very happy with their performances. Great, and we look forward to finding out more voices when the game comes out. And when is that? Uh, so the game comes out October 25th on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PC, Wii U, uh, as well as the companion game, which, which is called Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate, which comes out on the Nintendo 3DS and the PlayStation Vita. Great, thank you for talking to us today. Thanks.